and welcome to Gwent. It's been a while, but the Master Mirror expansion came out uh, over a week ago and uh, of course I had to try it out. And overall it's a step in the right direction, although I was disappointed that all the cards didn't get any love, uh, just new cards, and uh, a lot of them are kind of struggling to fit in. They kind of seem pointless, but I thought it would be a fun uh, experiment just to go over all the cards as quickly as possible. And I'm not gonna give uh, cards any credit, like, oh yeah, but maybe they're gonna release some new cards in the future and it's gonna be maybe po uh, make some sense. No, it's pointless. If, if the card is pointless, it's pointless. So, Onai Romasi, uh, it's an echo card, play any card from the deck, so it's kind of like a Royal Decree. Thing is, it's two point more expensive and because of the echo effect, at the beginning of it, uh, the round, move this card to the, from the graveyard to the top of its own deck, give it doomed. If, if it didn't have the doomed effect, it would be more excusable, so you can use it every round. And also, it doesn't have a, a way to... Uh, you, you have to also guarantee that you have it round one. And that's a bit of a problem. So I would say that the Echo cards, for that reason, they're a little weak. Because not only you have the Echo cards that usually... Uh, just not worth playing. If you just draw into the Echo card la last round, you just have a weaker card. So, yeah. So I'm not loving this because in order to guarantee that you also have it round one so you can actually play it twice, you also need to sacrifice something. And keep in mind, this is eight points above four. So uh, you're sacrificing quite a lot of power. This is just for consistency. You sacrifice a lot of power for consistency. Master Mirror, unfortunately, uh, this is uh, tries to be a funzy card, but like, I don't understand. Like, at, at one point in, in uh, the the life cycle of Gwent, I mean, the argument was made that you know maybe some randomness can be acceptable, but now it's just it is because it Gwent has become the probably one of the most random card games of all time. And look at this. Transform the leftmost card in your hand into a random legendary uh, card. Keep in mind that the left card in your hand is also random. So transform a random card in your hand into a random card uh, from your faction that was not in your starting deck. Repeat this ability whenever you play a rightmost card, which is also random. So uh, transform a random card into a random card when you play a random card. Yeah. A uh, very fun card. <clears throat> Obviously, like, even for, like, is it is it fun? I mean, it's kind of like playing rock, paper, scissors, where people just do anything but rock, paper, scissors, and just show, show random stuff, and like, oh, lo, it's kind of like the low random effect. But it's also going to be weak, because this game is played in a way that last round, you just want to have uh, basically all, uh, basically want an all gold hand. You don't want any bronzes, which is a bit of a problem in the first place. But that means that you're not going to have a uh, weak... V cards to transform, so this is something that you might want to use round one. And if it was like transform a particular card, it still would be bad because it's just it's just too much random. In it. So this is a irredeemable card. Oh god, the problem here is that it's just kind of pointless at this uh, point in the game. Like boost three units in the deck. Like uh, I haven't seen uh, one strat that used this. Uh, Ethereal. Uh, yeah, demon guy. This was used in uh, monsters a bit. I've seen it. So you can have the monster leader with the fruits of his grit and just keep transforming the Gurnachura's fruit into the demon. Now you can uh, rightfully ask the question, is this really worth it? I say that's a heavy investment, but monsters suck anyway. If you play the faction, you're gonna lose uh, if you run into anyone with a competitive deck, so might as well do it. For any other purpose, the ethereal is pointless. Uh, secret, uh, just a situational thing to purify stuff if like uh, people just have too many statuses. Uh, kind of pointless. Again, pointless. Veil is not that good, but I'm actually I don't like this keyword at all. I, I would I would not hate it if there was a actually a real cost to a veil on a unit, but there's not. Uh, usually, uh, we'll see with the faction cards. So, I, I don't like this, because this is just uh, discourages interaction, and this, like, how, how good is giving a unit Veil? Well, you're still gonna get killed, so uh, probably not that good. Offering, this is, like, damage unit by one, death blow. Uh, this is very situational, probably makes the most sense if you uh, play in the off-guard with Spice, but do you really want a, a six-point uh, play your stuff from your graveyard? <sighs> At that point, I would just rather try to use... Uh, um, 
like necromancy. At that point, it's at least at least reliable. But I, yeah, I mean, most of these cards are like, why even bother? Like, obviously, you're never gonna use this. Destroy a doomed unit. Okay, like, what is gonna be a doomed unit? You can use it with the fortune that I give a unit doom. But keep in mind, you only play bronzes round one. You don't want to play bronzes round three. So, I mean, what kind of big unit are you gonna destroy with a combo of two units? I don't think so. So this is a boost by six, pointless, completely pointless. And the squirrel, which is kind of a tech choice against Kaliga. So when it comes to the neutral card selection, unfortunately this is a, like a ZZZ. Uh, this is a pretty boring selection. Um, and uh, most of these cards, I mean, the only card, I I've seen people uh, use the Oneiromancy and lose badly with it. So, I mean, I, I guess that could be a card that you use. And uh, also seen some monsters use Ethereal and brutally lose with it. So, I mean, there you have it. Uh, Skuro also can be a tech choice against Skelliga, but if you just have it against non Skelliga, but even then, even if you have it against Skelliga, keep in mind, this is a trash card. So, unless you use it like round two against Skelliga, but that's like super specific. Do you want to keep this against round three? In round three against Skellige? Because that's a bad idea. So I would say that's a trash card. It's not really worth it. Monsters. Oh my god. How low you guys have fallen. Well, I can save you guys some time and say that the entire Vault Hunt package is complete garbage. But let's just go over it. We got the NL Conqueror. Uh, the, well, Devotion, if you only use uh, faction cards, then uh, you have a 7-4 guy here. Uh, who is also in the status, but it just doesn't, which doesn't really matter because he's just a 7-fed drop. I suppose in a, a Thrive strategy it would be a little bit uh, uh, better. So 7 basically means that you can have like... Uh, Maybe maybe a less value generators because this is like a pretty big drop, but also you don't want it um, round free because it's a little bit weak for that. But I suppose it's not as bad. But uh, not having any uh, neutral cards could uh, just cost you. So I mean, seems okay, but it's not great. Novgrad crew. This is a conditional value generator that spawns frost, which sucks. Frost sucks. Sucks so badly. I don't know what, what happened to Vetter. Vetter used to be such a, a critical part of the game, and now it's just complete joke. So Purify... The pro problem with Purify is that you don't... Do you really want to be uh, running just five power guys who can Purify? Keep in mind, when it comes to the power level, what the base, base you're looking for is provision cost plus two. Provision cost plus two is the total base. When it comes to value generators, you are looking for uh, provision cost plus two in four turns. Four turns. Those are the base units. Anything that just doesn't meet that level sucks. And because uh, value generators cannot reach that value in four turns, but of course better ones actually reach it faster, this means you want to have uh, either a lot of value generators in your deck, or you just want to get control, so your opponent is not really getting value from their value generators. <clears throat> and what we see here is monsters suck at control and also suck at generating value. We got this Valheim Bruiser here, uh, move an enemy into the other row, so 5-5 five, five mover. If the target moves to the row affected by frost, damage it by 2. <sighs> but it's not going to be a 7, because if there is frost on that row already, then you already lost some damage on the frost because it's triggering on an empty row. Unless your opponent is playing into two rows when you are playing a Vault Hunt, which is just stupid, so your opponent will not be doing this. Again, we get like an 8 for, for 6 uh, damage over time. This is not value generation. So these cards are complete garbage. The Aparian Phantom is the least bad here. But damage an enemy by free if the order is not used, boosts up by one. I mean, this is the least bad card, but the problem with that, that you're still gonna get super brutally outvalued by most factions in the game as a monster. So, and this guy doesn't combo with anything. Uh, even if you're uh, trying to uh, bank on dominance, he starts at a four, so he's not that great. 
Uh, basically, it's a, a frost roach, so pointless. Everything break grass kind of interesting, but the problem here is that increased damage dealt by frost by one. I mean, this would be an okay effect if it was like global effect on all the frost cards, not something that only uh, came into play when everything is on the fucking board. So that's a problem because can you just play Aradin and just hope that hope that uh, things gonna work out? Because you know if you can get away with Aradin, like oh yeah, increase the damage by frost by or, or frost by one. If you can get away with Aradin, then might as well just instead. If I can find it, yeah, go with Vivis Incantation, and whenever you play a Deathfish unit, triggers Deathfish ability. It's like oh my god, Deathfish twice, right? So. Uh, Wild Hunt is pointless, and you can kind of get away with the double deathfish as well, sometimes, but the monsters still lose, because they're just too weak. Both control-wise, and both value-wise. I mean, ultimately, the the best monster deck I could came up with is just to spam the enemy's board with, with rats, because you're just gonna get outvalued and uncontrolled in every game. Art get kind of has the same problem, it's an echo card, it's like, okay, you gotta play this uh, round one, and it's also a frost card, so this is complete garbage. There's there's just totally no redeeming uh uh for this uh <laughs> for this monster set in the Master Mirror expansion. Like there's there's not a single card that I would say like oh yeah that's good because the Aparian Phantom uh will be pointless too because you know like you just put down this one value generator and you're still gonna lose. So I probably would just go with the red deck. That's probably gonna give you the best best outcome. It still works okay, but uh, there was a bit of a, a power spike in uh, some factions, so it could be trickier. Next up, Nilfgaard. <laughs> oh man. Based on uh, some matchups I've uh, I've seen, first of all, I hate the assimilate archetype because it's like total random. It's like Wow. Then we can play Spies and uh, have some synergy with Spies. Ultimately, like, I mean, we, this Devotion ability that we have with many factions does have a cost. So you cannot have uh, neutral cards. And, uh, of course, we got a uh, Conspiracy, Trigger Disability units. If the unit has Spying status. Uh, that's not the one I was looking for. So, yeah, we got uh, de deal free damage to either side. Uh, this loyal, you can combo that, but the problem is, you just kind of get, uh, it's kind of too slow. It's not good enough for control. Uh, the Mage Infiltrator is just like, okay, that's kind of like a five-pointer, kind of, but, you know, it's a disloyal, so that has some extra synergies uh, with some cards, but you're still gonna lose against value decks. And your little bit of value generators will be get smashed by control. I suppose uh, Nerfguard is a uh, better control, but you know, if you're just talking control, uh, based on my experience, the poison deck is still the king. And uh, these cards are kind of uh, lame. And you also need a long ground. That's kind of the, the worst part in it. That you need a long ground in which you're just gonna lose against better value decks. And you can't really control them uh, well. So this is like just playing spies on your opponent board or just adding spying tags on them. The entire uh, set is just uh, uh, set up for one strategy. And unfortunately that strategy is just not really working. Coupe de Gras. Uh, I think this is one of the better options because if you can uh, target a, a pretty uh, strong... <laughs> pretty strong unit, then like a taunt, for example, then that could be nice. Uh, based on my experience, the poison deck is uh, by far the biggest winner, especially if you run into someone who's running a uh, fatty guys. And this assimilate uh, deck is just kind of garbage, along with uh, the spying deck. And I was running a super greedy, shut me down, I dare you deck. Uh, here we go. And uh, it it is super easy to beat me off guard. Like it is just com they are just completely hopeless. It it is a uh, a little uh, sad, but uh, yeah, you, you just want to go with maximum shutdown because whatever value generation that you you're planning is just not gonna be good enough. So unfortunately, the entire set is kind of pointless. I mean, I'm, I don't really understand why Urkenov, uh, Alan Wald, 
like okay at the at them turn boost the random ally unit by one i mean they just have these these veil units at seven power for all the factions but it doesn't really make sense we also got some pointless units so i, I don't really get it <laughs> the, the power level is just not there and the control is just not there either so i mean this is kind of a reminiscent i mean the, the main reason i hate this archetype so much first of all it's random second of all it kind of reminds me of the close beta spy archetype, which was fucking godlike. That was amazing. If anyone just goes back to those videos, it was something else. It was amazing. It was so, so well designed. It was spectacular. Every single time, it was, it was really, it was really hard to play. Frankly, that maybe that was the hardest part is that it, it required a lot of uh, attention to play that. And you really need to know what the fuck you were doing. And right now it's just like, oh yeah, let's just play a, a five here, and let, let's just play a, a four guy here, and like, uh, uh, and you kind of like, you want to go to round three, I suppose. I, I don't like create. I just don't like anything that has random in it. So when it comes to Northern Realm, I know, I, I know, it seems like I'm just hating on the entire set, but uh, <laughs> well, it, not the entire set is uh, without hope. Uh, we'll see. Amphibious Assault, unfortunate total garbage card again. This is kind of like a conditional royal decree. This is another problem that you gotta draw into it. If it had another keyword that, uh, you know, you started the first... It started in your hand in the first round. I mean, I would be like, ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe redeemable. But now, half the time, like, I'm just, just, just that I give or take. Half the time, you're not gonna have it in your, your hand. And, uh... I mean, even if you do, it's like, I mean, do you care that much? It's like, you're just playing a, a 9 provision unit with a 12 power. I mean, this is just consistency. This is not power, you know? You can just put in something really strong, like you can put in the Virexian Prince, because currently the game is that you start with 10 cards, round 1, you draw into 3, then draw into 3 again, with maybe like uh, Voto Tutening uh, uh, throughout the game. So that means that round three, there would be like nine to seven cards unused. And uh, mostly those gonna be bronzes. So, I don't know. This is... Uh, bronze are kind of pointless. I suppose you can also draw into some... Uh, uh, well, we can uh, check. Some better cards, like... Uh, we can draw into Anna Stranger, for example. She comes down with a boost already, so... I mean, that would be, like, a, a decent option. But do you really want a 12-pointer just to uh, go for the consistency? Virexian Prince, this is super pointless. I mean, only the higher... Uh, higher cost... Well, kind of gold... Uh, no Realm units have uh, stronger order abilities. And you just, like, Devotion, so you can use uh, neutral cards. That That's pretty costly. Yodiko... Uh, it's kind of like a 10 for 9, but like half the power can be uh, destroyed and also inspired. So you also need to boost it just to give order units zeal. Uh, I mean, the, uh, I would just rather use a taunt because this is just uh, messy. <laughs> this is just not that good. I mean, it's so damn situational. God damn it. And even if you have this, like what kind of zeal units are you using? Uh, that, that needs to just come into play right away. So, unfortunately, yeah, it's it's just garbage. I mean, I can, ju I can just say what cards are not garbage. I mean, that would be a pretty short video. <laughs> Holy fuck. All right. <clears throat> King Bellahun. The problem here is that whenever you play a unit with uh, less than four power, set it to four power, devotion, uh, power limit to five, okay. So, devotion that uh, you cannot use neutral cards. Yeah, but this is a guy you have to use, and then you have to add cards in your deck that synergize with this guy. And keep in mind, last round, you also don't want any bronzes. So I guess you're using this round one, maybe, if you draw into him, with some of your bronzes. But then, your bronzes need to be the bronzes that have low power, so you can actually boost them up. And you would also need to boost up quite a lot, because this guy has 9 provision and uh, starts with 5 power. So that means you would want at least 6 power from him, and at that point it would not be enough worth it. So at least, at least, you would want, I say, I would personally want at least 13 power from, from him to even 
uh, begin to entertain the idea of using him. I mean, of course, if it was like a global tank, like all your units start at 5 power, then oh yeah, I guess that's a deck building limitation and deck building uh, peculiar peculiarity. And it can be not, not just increase the power limit to 5, it can be just set the power limit to 5 and like, oh shit. You think about that, no, that's awesome. But unfortunately, right now, he's just totally pointless. I'm, I'm unfortunately not a huge fan of the Devotion deck building limitation because it, it's just tied to the dumbest cards. Like, how is this card okay? I mean, I understand that, you know, they want to go for maybe acceptable balance. And frankly, they are failing at that. But it's not like totally broken balance. So the balance is not completely broken, but like... At what cost? Look at this guy. He's a 3 plus 4. I mean, what is this math? I mean, okay, I understand. Like, this guy is easy, and but like, I don't understand the target audience. Like, 6-year-olds, maybe? Who only count on their fingers? I mean, I I'm not saying the game definitely has to be uh, heavy on math, but... I mean, the cards can be interesting. You know, you can't just have like cards that like, 7 plus 4, wow, ho how cool is that? Turn-based, uh... This is just too boring. I mean, I would just basically fail most of the cards for being too boring. It needs to be very interesting. Like, the first question that you should be asking, I think it just kind of flipped around. Uh, and that's kind of disappointing for me, is that, first of all, is this card fun? That's always the first question. And, you know, some of these cards are like, oh yeah, that could be interesting. But then it's like, wait, why? It's way too situational, it's just never gonna work. But this guy obviously fails the is this card fun test. So that, that's a bit of a problem. <clears throat> Egmund is actually kind of decent. He's like, uh, well, well, I just find him. He's basically like a Temurian drummer <laughs> that has a bit of a finisher, but it's like, uh, okay, okay, Egmund. It's like, you can use him. I mean, the bad part is that he's locked to Meliro. The fact that he deals free damage is completely pointless. Uh, because you want to be comboing him. And the combo potential is kind of nice, but he's not doing anything new. But I suppose... Uh, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, we got the ship guy, which kind of makes volunteers every turn. Uh, this could uh, be okay with Drog. I don't hate the ship. Although, I mean, this is kind of playing against how the, the game is kind of set up to be. You don't really want bronzes last round, but I suppose this is a this is a bit too expensive for a bronze because you mostly want bronze as a throwaway. Keep in mind that you're gonna be having uh, like 79 cards in your deck round three, and the the cheaper they are, the stronger your hand is. That's how it works. So you want to have a strong hand. If you if you have like a six to five power bronzes, then then keep in mind that you also have a weaker hand. And just a stronger, <laughs> just a stronger draw pile, which is totally pointless. You don't want that. That's stupid. But this ship is okay, uh, and uh, you can use it round one. I mean, ultimately, like this is uh, one of the better examples of value generators because this is a four on play. Then next round it's a six. Then uh, after that round it's an eight. Then it becomes a ten. So in four rounds, this is a, a ten for. Them for uh, six, which is which is good. Like, okay, this is like, a, yeah, this is a good card. Uh, but it's kind of like a bit bit more situational. But it's not too bad because you can always play a soldier next to it. Man, the, the most limiting factor here is the the board space. So yeah, gotta consider that. These guys are pointless. <laughs> I don't understand what the hell they were thinking here. Carrick City Guard uh, is actually like. It's so interesting when it comes to the the power level. So he is immune to statuses and also a mover and a value generator. Holy fuck! But he's still kind of not making the cut, and that's super interesting. So in in four rounds he's gonna be a seven for five that can just move at any time at will and also immune to statuses. Cannot be locked. Cannot be. Uh, cannot. Uh, cannot bleed or whatever. And he's pretty damn good. But, it's, it's kind of like, it's, he's borderline. Because he's not really a combo card. I mean, he can, he can combo. He can combo with, uh, with uh, Gerald Igni, for example. You can just uh, shift the card uh, from one row to the other, or you just uh, can shut down things that need to be rule-specific, or just move away the ton. I think he's pretty okay. 
when it comes to the Carrick City Guard, I mean, Carrick City Guard and Egmund are the only ones here that I would recommend. Carrick Marine, uh, I wouldn't recommend this guy just uh, straight up because he's just too, too boring. And also, he doesn't have uh, much synergy in the first place. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, you boost by four, I, I, I guess, but, you know, for example, we got one deck here, and we are using uh, multiple uh, neutral cards. I think Matahari is the most interesting one here, uh, but Geraldine is a pretty good choice, too, because we are making the runs longer for a faction that's kind of known for its value generation. And uh, we also have Iris in there, so, I mean, you definitely want to consider at least few neutral cards for your deck, and uh, the Devotion... Uh, definitely has a cost to it. So, I, I at that point, it's like, uh, I don't really care about this Karak Marine too much. If I could just put it in, if this didn't have Devotion, <laughs> just just like a 3, pl three plus 4, it's like, uh, I don't know, I, I guess he's, he's gonna make the cut, but like, it's just too expensive right here. And this guy's just not worth it with the Order, give Bleeding. So this is kind of like a pseudo value generator that stops generating value and kind of starts at a 4-4. Four, four. It's just not worth it because it doesn't have combos. <sighs> what a sad sight. So far, I could recommend Egmund. I guess we're gonna go over it at the end. Ah, uh, I hate these guys. So, with the new patch, they decided to completely murder Harmony, the only viable archetype of uh, Scoyotel. And now Scoyotel is completely dead. They added this new archetype, uh, based on Symbiosis, uh, based on nature cards, that all suck. So let's look at this. Wow, we got the nature cards here. I mean, this nature card sucks now because the harmony effect sucks. You can replay a bronze nature card. Uh, this nature card sucks. Uh, that's kind of random. And uh, yeah, all the bronze nature cards suck too. Except maybe Dryads, Keras, but even that is super situational. Uh, and it only works in Dryads. So, I mean, it's safe to say that all the nature cards suck. And then you have to make a decision like, okay, now now go now, now we're gonna play these uh, bad cards. Like you can have a devotion with eight nay and six plus get two dryads, so you get a, a ten plus for eleven. And then you gotta play nature cards that are kind of coming in at minus two and minus three below the desired level. Uh, so you gotta play a crap ton of uh, treants. Treants are symbiosis. Whenever you play a nature card, spawn a wandering treant in a random ally draw and set its power equal to the number of units with symbiosis you control. But these symbiosis cards come in at minus two. At least minus two. So you gotta play at least two treants. That means, but because the nature cards are already bad, they also come in at minus two, minus three uh, in the first place. You gotta play at least four treants to justify these cards. And these cards are garbage too. <laughs> That's so sad. Look at this. Like uh, it's a four for four. Yeah, they they are they are very consistently coming in at minus two, and you would need to play four nature cards just to make them on curve. Uh, I kind of clicked away, unfortunately. And uh, that's just that's just the dumbest. The only card that doesn't suck here is the old critters. Uh, which is a devotion card that adds some bleeding, and you get like two oak critters. It's like uh, spawn a base copy. Like this is still not good. It, don't have any illusions about this. This is still a bad card because you get a seven plus for four, but it's damage over time. So this is kind of like a pseudo value generator that stops generating value. I suppose you can play this a little bit later, but it's still a bad card because this is not a value generator. It just stops after three rounds. And unfortunately, all the cards here just are complete garbage. Like, this is uh, Symbiosis, 4 for 4, uh, 3 plus 2. I mean, this is just super simple math with uh, no redeeming quality. I mean, Hamadriad kind of likes uh, Vitality, but uh, that's not really uh, much to write home about. Dunkway is a little interesting, but by herself, uh, she's kind of pointless. <clears throat> Dunkway is basically just... Uh, Uh, Hawker Smuggler <laughs> with a finisher. Uh, let's just see. Yeah. Just a total Hawker Smuggler with a finisher. <laughs> so, uh, there you have it. And also immune to uh, getting moved away. Like, status immune. Actually, I'm not sure if uh, immune to getting moved away. And all the other cards here completely suck. Like, irredeemable. Bad. 
Uh, Oak Critters is like something like, ah, uh, maybe. The problem here is that they murdered... Harmony. And uh, Harmony only triggers if you're playing units on the same row. Which is the dumbest. Which is... This, this, I, I don't get it at all. They made no changes to the card in the first place. I mean, Harmony was not that strong. It was really not that strong. I don't know who these Harmony guys were playing against. I don't know, maybe... I, I, I don't know, I, I cannot imagine. Harmony was not that strong. I, it was, like, it was getting beaten. Like, it was an okay deck, but it was not that strong. And uh, especially for a faction that has nothing else going on. So, I mean, uh, they deleted uh, Squirtle from the game, I think. Uh, that, that's, that would be my analysis here. But I suppose Dunk can be used. And... But problem is the traps are so bad too. Like, just Squirtle just doesn't have anything going on here. I I, I looked into Squirtle, and there's just nothing you can do. The entire faction is like beyond hope here. The the traps were not buffed for like two two years by now, and the, some of the traps are like total jokes. Like I, I don't get it. Like look at this delayed, uh, conditional, eight boost. Like what the fuck are we talking about here? This is so bad. I mean, some cards are okay, but like the entire faction is like, wow. I mean, if I just uh, started slapping plus two on, on most cards here, or if I slapped plus two on all cards here, I would be closer to a balance than if I did nothing. <clears throat> so let's see what we have with Skellige. Welcome to your favorite faction, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you waited for the right time. <laughs> Harald and Crate. So, when you're looking at uh, Skellige in the new faction, I, I, you clearly know this already if you uh, played. So, what you have to do is uh, just look at this uh, this selection of new cards and like, hmm, let's think about this. Let's put in all of these guys, except the spell. And uh, there you have it. You already have half your deck. <laughs> so, what we have here is a 8-point bleeder. That cannot be shut down. This is kind of like the other bladers, but it's it also has one one extra point on it, and but you also apply bleeding to one of your units, which is kind of an interesting uh, mechanic. Would be interesting if we didn't have also status immune units that we can just uh, play for free, and we also have veterans, so that kind of makes uh, Skellige better at what the game already turned into, which is play one, play round one, ignore round two, skip round two, then play round three. So Skellige is actually better at that, uh, without over-relying on value generators, like, uh, for example, Nora Realm has to. And uh, when it comes to, uh, of course, Nilfgaard, they kind of have to over-rely on control. So Nilfgaard is the control-crazy faction, uh, Skellige is the, hey, I have stupidly good cards, that try to beat me faction, and the Nora Realm is the super greedy faction. And everybody else is kind of getting smacked. So this drummer guy, okay, so we got a 8 for 4 here, uh, it's a pretty solid 8 for 4. It's not, not, well, I'm not saying this is even that good, but like for 4 points, this is pretty good. Uh, Tursurge Invader, I'm actually not a huge fan of this card uh, that much, but it still has a veteran on it, and it's immune to status, it kind of combos with the drummer villager. This is something you can cut. Uncrate Raider, it's like uh, 6 for 5, but like if you get this round 3, then you're gonna have a on 8 for 5, so, I mean, ultimately, you don't have to have all these cards, I mean, I was a little bit exaggerating, but when it comes to the power level of these cards, it's pretty high, especially with this Drummer Berserker is the dumbest, starts at a 5, then starts shooting every turn for 1, and when it reaches 2, it actually transforms into a bear, so you actually get 9 points uh, for 5. So, I suppose that's a little bit similar to the Drummer Villager, but this can keep shooting, uh, kind of indefinitely. And uh, if you just keep healing it up, and if you just, you know, get hit by random damage, then I suppose it just goes into a bear. So it's a pretty good card. Like, you know, you can't really argue with like 8 for 4 and uh, 9 for 4. I mean, 9 for 5. I mean, at that point, like, the other factions, I kind of start feeling bad for the for their, with their, I don't know, 5 for 4 and 6, six to 4 cards. And when you see the 6 for 4, it's like, yes, this is my, my purpose. You're going to be a core in my deck. Herkia, Drummert, uh, kind of like the other factions, is the auto-include, especially considering that Herkia actually combos, combos with uh, other units like Greatsword, and, uh, yeah, Greatsword, and, uh, 
and the Dagur. So, I mean, it's a pretty good... I mean, as much as I like to hate on Skellige for being a kind of a boring faction, I have to say this, this patch for them is kind of an interesting one. So, I kind of like it. Uh, Skjordal, I think he's a little bit overrated, but he's definitely like a, a, a 10 uh, for 8. Uh, that's a damager veteran. You can just uh, play it last round. Blood Eagle is also the best uh, echo card by far. Uh, you can deal 2 damage and play a warrior from the deck. Uh, with a provision of uh, 7 or less. Uh, that you can do this twice. I mean, the thing is, this echo card is actually worth doing even once. So, uh, that's kind of nice. Next up, we get uh, Tyr Gui, uh, Tyr Such. This guy gives an enemy rupture. And uh, I suppose Purify would be really good against him, but uh, status effects are not that common, so most people don't care about Purifying. It is very rare. If anything, mostly it's Skellige guys who put in some Purify, and uh, that way they're just kind of negating their own uh, Turgui's. Uh, I, I don't know if that's how this guy called, but <laughs> whatever, I'm be calling it that. Uh, so, yeah. But I, I guess in that case it would matter. And uh, this rupture actually is, is super powerful. Like, if it goes down, if it happens, then uh, yeah, I mean, it's very strong. So I suppose for him, if, if Skellig dominated the game, then adding in one Purify actually makes sense. And Harald is also uh, the best. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck, Skellige? Is also the best uh, devotion card. He plays a bronze warrior from the graveyard and also keeps shooting every round, ignoring armor. Wow. So, uh, great combo with the great sword and uh, Dagur two blades. So, Skellige is a huge winner of this uh, patch. Uh, that's for damn sure. I don't care. Back to it. No. Uh, save this deck. Can, can I just discard the deck? I don't care. And last and definitely least, Syndicate. Oh my god, where do I begin roasting you? Uh, should I uh, cleanse these guys with Holy Fire? Now, the big problem here is that... Look at this. They went with the archetype. We can just go from the bottom, destroy an allied unit, gain 3 coins, obviously no one's gonna do that, gain 3 coins, so we got a 7 plus, a 7 for 4 again, a devotion. I mean, this is this just really grinds my gears, that they basically added the same card into every faction. All these, these 7 for 4 cards in every faction, is like, ah, uh, with devotion, like, where's the originality? And then we have these 7 uh, provision cards with Veil vale in every faction again. Like, I don't get it. I mean, <laughs> I don't get it. <sighs> Spawn a fla uh, flaming rose footman in this row at the end of turn if order is not used, gain one coin. So they basically do the same thing. You just get a, a, a four and uh, you can eventually get a three. And if you're not doing that, then you're just generating value. All the same thing. So I don't get it. I don't get it. So these cards are in every faction, but some of them actually uh, combo. And actually getting coin is uh, more valuable, so... Ultimately, he's a little bit like a... Uh, I think it's a 5. A tax collector, I guess. He's basically a tax collector. He's a tax collector that can uh, make a Flaming Bruce Footman. But the least excusable part about this expansion for uh, <laughs> the Syndicate that they double down on the Fire Sworn strategy, which is basically a token spamming strategy, where you eventually, like, trans uh, transform the tokens and boost them up. Well, the main thing about that strategy is that it's god-awful boring. So, it's it's not really a question of power level. That, fa that strategy will always suck. Even if, you know, the thing is, even if it was the best strategy in the game, I'm telling you, it would be really bad for the game, because people would still play it, feel like they need to play it, and it would be really boring. I've not seen a single person uh, play with it, but Syndicate actually has a built-in flaw. I guess we can uh, kind of go over this. Immunity, destroy all Fire Sworn tokens and destroy them, boost up by the sum of their power. Immunity, wow! This guy cannot be targeted, but it can still be burned. What else we have here? Uh, Profit 2, uh, spawn a uh, Fire Sworn Zealot. I mean, they are all like, or just for the tokens uh, spamming. Spawn a Flaming Rose Footman on the Elytro, and it, they are also quite uh, underpowered as well. 
So whenever you spawn a unit, boost up by one for each uh, unit spawned. I mean, this is kind of how you justify the units uh, uh, spamming, uh, token spamming, but still a kind of a boring guy. The problem here is, keep in mind, bronze cards are pointless. They are always pointless. Last round, you want to have a hand of all golds. So, yeah, that's a problem. And this is like, oh, yeah, boosts. But this doesn't do anything. This just gets rid of the tokens because you're already getting way too many tokens. So this is not great. Like, oh yeah, you're making some fire, uh, some uh, tokens more. Damage an enemy by three and boost all allied fire sworn units by one. Boost all allied units instead with death blow. I mean, this is like, oh okay. Uh, do you wanna damage by three here? The thing is, you're most likely not gonna be mega token spam round one. Also, echo card uh, still has the problem. You can just put in the boost everything by one card. Uh, as a finisher, that's probably gonna be cheaper. You're not gonna care too much for the uh, free damage. Not like it's gonna matter too much. Not like you can actually use it for removal because you gotta save it until the point where you actually have like a, a whole board full of tokens, and then and then you go for the boost. At that point, the damage doesn't really matter. And do you really have access to something that you can actually kill with a token spamming strategy? Uh, I doubt it. It's very doubtful. Oric! Spawn and play a base copy of the Firesworn unit from your hand, boosted by two. Uh, and we got Jax in the end, the Miraculous Child, that again is all about going to round three. But keep in mind, there are factions called Skellige and Nor Realm that will beat you every time round three. So I don't care what kind of token spamming you're doing, you're gonna lose. So. Jacks don't really do anything. It's like a 10 for 11 that has the potential, the, the capacity to spawn flaming rose footmen on the row when you pay a tribute. Wow. The big problem, the fundamental flaw in Syndicate that they are... I don't know if they're gonna fix, but yeah, I mean, this is the reason that Syndicate is kind of will stay garbage. Is that... Syndicate kind of relies on spending gold, and I guess you can try to not use gold at all, but that's not going to work so well. And uh, if you want to spend gold, you have to use cheap uh, cheap uh, bronzes that you don't want to have round 3, but you kind of have to have them round 3. And then you're going to lose because you have weak bronzes round 3, so I guess you might want to use them round 1, but what about like uh, more expensive spenders? Uh, they're, well, they're garbage, and uh, fee... I'm not even sure why this guy is actually uh, showing up. Oh, because the Slice Seductress. I mean, yeah. This is the the big spender guy, but this is this doesn't have a an effective way to spend in the first place. So, yeah. Syndicate kind of has this problem, and that needs to be fixed. But the most pressing issue currently in the game is the power level. The power level is so fucking bad. I, I, I just... or just the balance is so bad. It is just really hard to imagine. When you, when you just look at the Vault Hunt things, I was, I was looking at that, and I basically got super sad. This is not even the worst guy. But look at this. We got the Vault Hunt Hunt. Look at this guy. He's a 3 for 5. Conditionally boosts itself up. Conditionally. 3 for 5. Okay. We got this guy. Okay, let's just... Okay, not a problem. Let, let's let's just look at the Northern Realms. What about these the new cards here? Oh, look at this. We got another 3 for 5. It is... A... A status immune. 3 for 5. That is unconditionally boosts itself up. And can move any unit at will. Okay, okay. So, am I supposed to be using that Vault Hunt Hunt? I mean, that obviously is completely useless. And even this guy doesn't make the cut. If this guy doesn't make the cut, how does the Vault Hunt Hunt make the cut? And the Vault Hunt Hunt is actually one of those borderline cards that you might say like, oh yeah, I guess I can put it in the deck at one point. I think the balance is just, you know, needs to be looked at. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the problem here. Uh, just to recap, Unfortunately, Syndicate has uh, kind of got a really boring expansion. It is just not much you can do with Syndicate. I was kind of hoping... Yeah, I mean, the previous expansion didn't suck that much. But uh, the token spamming uh, Firestorm strat... I've not seen... Well, I, I did see one person using it. 
And not only uh, his strat was super boring, but also he had zero chance. So uh, it's not the best. I mean, but even if they buffed it up, it would be still terrible. Because keep in mind, you're competing with cards that... Even in the Syndicate... I mean, I'm not even gonna look at other factions. All cards. Even in the Syndicate, you have cards that just give you two coins per turn. Two value per turn. And coins actually accepted to be uh, more valuable uh, than just the two, two random points. But coins are actually can be used for can be exchanged for free points. So like you can exchange two two coins for for free power. So I mean for that reason you actually can get a lot of uh, value. And do you really want to go with a fire sworn token spam? I've not seen a single person pull this off, and uh, it's just not gonna be good enough. Skellige is the big winner of this uh, expansion for sure. Uh, basically, all their cards are pretty sweet, but they can actually struggle a tiny bit, a tiny bit, with value, but they all actually just have a crazy amount of control, so uh, Skellig is the huge winner here. Skoyatal got completely murdered, uh, so when someone asks you, uh, what is a Skoyatal, uh, just pretend uh, you didn't hear them, because uh, the faction doesn't exist. I mean, you can just try to put in some ra just to make some kind of random deck, with, like, maybe put in Dunka and... Try to put in the cards in Squirtle that don't suck, but you're gonna lose against uh, all factions because uh, they actually can build decks that uh, uh, at least make some sense. I mean, by by making decks, I mean you just put in the good cards and <laughs> don't pay too much attention to identity. But uh, no Rams actually can uh, put together a, a pretty decent boost deck uh, with, with a little bit of control in it. So I mean. It's kind of kind of fun. I, I like it. It's more like the strategy is more like come come get me peasants. You know, you just uh, start playing with a crap ton of points, and you're playing more of a defensive game, and uh, you're just trying to hold back the barbarians while you're just uh, going up in points. That's pretty strong. That's kind of a. I've not seen one person uh, beat me with this deck, unfortunately. So that's a bit of a problem. My biggest issue uh, with the new cards is that they don't really change too much. I mean, in a, in a way, this kind of tries to enable one extra strategy, but it doesn't really change much for the faction. And uh, when it comes to uh, what uh, what is the best, I mean, this is this is the best. You just want to go with uh, Poison Spam, and you want to go with Control, because they have got a little bit struggles with value, but they can make up for it with Control. But this is just, you know, spy spam and maybe some residual damage and just m more spy spam and assimilate is sem something I hate. Because playing random cards, created cards, is uh, just a good way to lose. If you want to have consistency, random is the last thing you want. So, for example, this deck can... I mean, so far my consistency is like, I don't know, like 90% plus win rate at least. I would say 95, but... Uh, I think, uh, well, I named it Never Lose Fuck We Lost Once. I think we lost two times. And I climbed from, like, uh, I don't know, rank 7. So, I actually lost to myself. <laughs> and I also lost to one Skellige. So, I mean, that that's the nature of the the game right now. You might actually lose to uh, Neofgar too. The Neofgar can be scary, but uh, not this deck. Uh, monsters, I've run into one guy running the the Wild Hunt deck, and this is just so sad. This just makes me sad, because I remember the good old times where Frost was just like, KILL THE ENTIRE ROW! That was Frost. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little bit exaggerating here, but it just dropped everything on the road to one power. I was like, oh fuck, and that was now that was something. But now it's it's some kind of a pseudo value generator, but it's, it's just like, it is just a delayed... It's just kind of got a damage over time, and then it expires, and like... And it's not control either, because it doesn't kill them, it just just hits them in the head, and, uh, and that's it. And you try to use the the dominance, but dominance is super weak. And it's just really not worth it, and maybe maybe if there's a global fact that Frost is one point stronger than, than maybe, but Frost is just too damn weak. And uh, it just cannot even hope to compete. I mean, what I want to see is that I play Frost on the row, and it's like, oh fuck! That road needs to be abandoned. That used to be the old style. But they they got rid of the rows and now rows are completely pointless. The rows are totally pointless. At this point, it might as well be a one-row game. 
<laughs> because the rows don't matter. Uh, with two rows, it, there's just no uh, meaningful decisions uh, to be made. Other than not playing into two two rows of frost. But even if I did that, it wouldn't matter because uh, the wild hunt it just it just doesn't have the control or or the value to even come close. And they also have a they also super fragile too. So I don't know. <laughs> such a such a weak deck. Uh, when you're playing monsters, I I would just recommend playing the red deck. I mean that can shut people down, especially with the uh, with no realm, going for the ship strat and uh, Skellige, Skellige not damaging uh, themselves that much. Uh, even uh, even uh, Nilfgaard likes to spam things. I played the Rat Raid, Rat Raid deck a little bit, but uh, it was just too familiar to me. I know uh, some of you really love that, but I, I played it quite a lot, so uh, for me it was it wasn't that new, but it is extremely effective. The The only problem with the Rat Raid deck is that it is basic, it is identical, it is the same, because none of new cards add anything. Even uh, the this Phantom guy is completely useless. And the neutral cards, as usual, uh, don't tend to be uh, big deals, but in this case, uh, kind of <laughs> kind of goes double. Because, yeah, before we had Matahari, that was pretty good, and Morale was pretty uh, impactful as well. Even at one point, King Cobra guy was uh, pretty impactful too. In uh, the Iron Judgment uh, times, we also had more neutrals. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that these guys were more impactful, but I, I did see the Living Armor here. But now, it's like... I mean, I, I do see some guys using the Oyermancy and uh, losing really badly with it. Because like, wow, I, I spent 12 points on nothing. Look at me. And that's not the best. So, that's it guys, it's already too long, I know I didn't go as as much in depth, but the thing is, I'm not gonna be analyzing the, the future prospects of cards that will never be realized, and some some uh, archetypes really don't need to be uh, explained other than like, wow, look at this, you see this? Don't use any of that, maybe, maybe the Phantom. Uh, <laughs> so, look at this, I don't know, I, I guess you can use it, but... Uh, then, then, uh, when you f forget about spies, uh, start playing some poison. Uh, yeah, good luck with that. I mean, this is, this is probably the second best, because we got Egmund, uh, the Karak City Guard, and the, uh, uh, Karak Frigate, that is kinda worth recommending. Uh, we got Danka here. Uh, we got the whole thing here, except, uh, War of Clans. And the Syndicate, this is just too boring. Too boring and uh, doesn't fix the critical flaw in Syndicate. Uh, that they need to uh, use fee. So, and uh, they have older, better cards. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the token strat is just boring, okay? And this didn't really do anything to, to, to save that. And there's never gonna be, the way game works now... Bronze cards will never be the thing that you play last round. You always want to be have like always want to have a full hand of golds. So when you look at that like lonely champion, this doesn't matter. So you you gotta ask yourself when it comes to bronzes, what does this give me round one? Do is this will this help me round one win win round one? And it seems like all the bronzes are kind of like have uh, illusions of grandeur, like they're gonna be used for some kind of a long round three finish. And I, I I saw people try to do that, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you have these bronzes, but they're not going to be core of your strategy. You just have underpowered cards, and you got to make at least four tokens for this guy to become uh, even uh, borderline. But ideally, you want to have, like, at least six tokens for this guy to be okay. Uh, I guess he... And then, even then, he can just get killed. He's also a pretty expensive uh, common. Expensive for a common. I, I know, like, the, the fact that he's, he's, a, he's a common that doesn't necessarily matter. Like, if he was, like, ridiculous, I suppose. Like, the thing is, the golds tend to be... Well, more expensive. <laughs> I suppose the card color really doesn't matter. If there was a bronze that cost 15 points, then I, I suppose that would be fine. But uh, bronzes tend to be uh, cheap and uh, a little lackluster. Golds tend to be a, maybe a slightly better. Not not always, but sometimes they're like, you know, they sneak in like one point. And uh, that's kind of nice. Anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, tell me what you think. I would like to hear. Like, maybe maybe this is a little bit of a pes pessimistic look at the patch. And I, I truly, you know, I care about the game, obviously. I came back, wanted to check it out. And 
this this just wasn't the patch uh, that you know that just you know completely won me over so far. I'm kind of hoping that there's just gonna be a follow up patch. I, I know that there was a tournament that I didn't care about, still don't care about, partly because I was a little bit bored of the current meta, but. If anything, I'm kind of hoping there's going to be like a big ass rebalance patch. I don't care. Just give it to a random Redditor and uh, I mean, it can hardly get worse. So that's it, guys. Uh, see ya. And yeah. Have a good one.